Welcome back, mobile gamers. My name is Nimble Thor, and this is my weekly roundup of the five games I played last week, which this time includes an idle RPG, a police car chasing casual endless game, the most beautiful mech game I've ever played, a car RPG where we get to play as Leonardo da Vinci, and a Marvel tic-tac-toe game. So let me know what you think about these games, leave a like and subscribe for more, and be sure to stick around till the end of this video to hear what my favorite game was. So with that said, let's just get started. Paco Forever is the third and latest game in the Paco Endless Car Chase Simulator series, where we control a vehicle trying to escape an increasingly higher number of police cars as we drive around the small streets and parking lots of the game, picking up power ops along the way to take out some of the police cars. Sounds simple enough, right? Well, to begin with it is, but after 30 seconds of surviving, random encounters such as a huge fiery boulder and tornadoes start appearing, which spices up the gameplay to make it fun and infuriatingly difficult. There's no currency at all in the game, with new cars unlocked through completing difficult missions, which is great to see, and then a single $3 in-app purchase to remove advertisements that appear every now and then. The game can be played offline, it takes up only 104 megabyte of space, it's out both on Android and iOS, and my final verdict is that you should play it if you're looking for a casual racing game. Battle of Titans is a fun real-time multiplayer mech shooter with super high quality graphics, which means it won't run on older phones, sadly, sorry for those of you guys out there, but only a few maps and mechs right now as the game has only just globally released. Matchmaking takes only about a minute and whenever we die, we respawn as a new mech until we run out of mechs to play as, and we have two to begin with by the way. And this ensures that the matches only last between 5 and 10 minutes, which is just perfect for mobile. We can upgrade and customize our mechs between matches, adding new weapon types depending on our combat style, and buying new weapons requires the game's soft currency, of which we can get more per match if we buy the monthly $10 battle pass. I personally found the controls to work just fine, and the monetization isn't bad either, but I would love to see more levels, mechs, cloud sync, and optimizations before I can deem this game truly amazing. The game requires online access, it takes up 1.04 gigabyte of space, it's out both on Android and on iOS, and my final verdict is that you should definitely play it, and especially if you enjoy mech shooters, because despite its drawbacks and in terms of the limited amount of mechs and levels right now, the game shows great promise. Knights and Glory Tactical Battle Simulator is a new game that is still in beta and it's a tactical RPG where we collect cards of historical characters like Leonardo da Vinci, Arthur the Lionheart and so on, and we then set up a deck of one archer, one cavalry and one infantry unit. At the start of every battle, we then pick how many of each unit type to deploy and we then just sit back and watch the battle unfold automatically, with the three unit types taking turns to attack each other. I very much enjoyed the combat because of the decent amount of strategy going into picking which units to use depending on the combat we're about to engage in, which keeps the game very interesting. The card system has us level up units by collecting more of their cards through completing campaign matches and opening loot boxes, but there are no wait times on these loot boxes except for the ones from the non-online PvP. Because these loot boxes can also be bought through in app purchases, there is a slight pay to progress faster element to the game, but with no energy system, we can at least play for as long as we want. Finally, for once. The game requires an online connection, it will take up 165 megabyte of space on your phone. It's available both on Android and on iOS if you ask for the beta invite, and my final verdict is that you should play it if you enjoy tactical strategy RPGs with no energy systems. Marvel Battle Lines is a strategy card game where we collect superheroes, add them to our deck, upgrade them, and then take them into single player and real time multiplayer matches where we take turns placing one unit at a time on a 3x4 grid dealing damage to the opposing player whenever we have three heroes on a row. But wait, isn't this just tic-tac-toe? Well, yeah. It is, but what makes the game more interesting than normal tic-tac-toe is the fact that all heroes have HP and attack stats. Some have special abilities that trigger when initially placed on the grid or on every turn, and all of the most powerful heroes cost mana to use, of which we gather more by placing a unit on a tile where there's mana. Now, the campaign missions tell a pretty nice story through comic book-like strips, which might entice Marvel fans to play the game, but since cards can be unlocked through inner purchases and because of the huge difference in stats between weak and strong heroes, there is definitely a pay to win element to the PvP of this game. If you can live with the long startup times and the wait times between menus, I'll recommend the game for its single player content, but I'm personally going to stay far away from the multiplayer. The game requires an online connection, it takes up 910 megabyte of space, so just below 1 gigabyte. It's available both on Android and on iOS, and my final verdict is that you should consider it, but only if you don't mind the sluggish menus at this point and the slightly unfair PvP. 
Wizard's Wheel 2 is an indie idle RPG. It's not a clicker game, but it's an idle game with more depth to its RPG elements and items than most mobile games can even hope to achieve, making this the perfect game for min-maxers. The game is definitely very similar to the first game in the series, with a facelift on the graphical side, but with much of the same core gameplay. So that means there are buildings to buy, loot to find, weapons to upgrade, dragons to slay, heroes to hire, and of course, time to warp, which makes you restart from zero with some advantages. A very traditional idle game system. Monetization of the game happens through a few incentivized video ads and in-app purchases to speed up our progress, but neither of these are forced upon us as players, which is just great to see. The very high complexity of the game might make it difficult to get into for new players, but once you understand the systems, it's a very enjoyable indie idle game. The game can be played offline, it takes up only 141 megabyte of space, it's sadly only out on Android for now, but my final verdict is that you should definitely play it if you can, and especially if you enjoy idle games in the fantasy setting, as this is my favorite game of the week. Thanks for watching, let me know which game was your favorite, and until next time, just keep gaming, stay awesome, and I'll see you guys around.